Hi guys and welcome to my review for the Night Oblivion Butastur. I hope I'm saying that correctly. Uh, if not, my apologies. Um, anyway, let's get into this. Um, Night Oblivion is a, 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 a new brand. I've never heard of it. Uh, it has uh, it has the, the, the touch of a HeadFi uh, member known as American Spirit. And first and foremost, I want to give my congratulations to him because uh, you know what he has he's been able to obtain and achieve and do with this uh, I am is absolutely uh, well it's nothing short of absolutely exceptional uh, and you know before I carry on and, and, and give you my take on on the Buddha student and what I think of it uh, let me just say that you know ideally I would have wanted a few more days to listen to it 100% I've had it for about a week now uh, but you know when you are presented with a really good product which is the case of the the Buddha Studio. You don't need many days or you don't need many hours to to uh, figure out that you are in the presence of something which is special. And that's the reason why I am doing the review relatively early, uh, you know, considering that I've only had it for about a week. Anyway, this is the box of the of the Buddha Studio. It's a simple box. I mean, it's as simple as can possibly be imagined. Nothing was really, uh, you know, there, there wasn't no real... Um, uh, attempt to, 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 to do something fancy or anything. I am scheme over there. In those two holes are these two bags which have tips, okay? Uh, and then over here is the carrying case. It's a modular plug cable, which I'll show to you in a second. These are the plugs, okay? Uh, and that's it. Very simple. It comes with the, it came with, it comes with some foam, foam tips, these ones here. These ones here, okay? Came with some foam tips on. These are some more other foam tips. Uh, actually, the, yes, no, these are silicone, sorry, my apologies. Um, and yeah, that's it. Simple, straight to the point. Uh, no, no, no overly complicated, no nothing. As for the well, cases here, okay, as for the IEM itself, um, as I said, the cable is modular. It's a very nice quality cable. I cannot honestly I cannot complain so much so that I actually just left it on because it's it's it matches the IEM perfectly and as for the IEM very subtle very classy very understated in its appearance really small for a 10 BA uh, unit if you consider that it's it's basically uh, a mix of uh, Sonian and Knowles although predominantly Knowles BAs very very small with a very tastefully done face plate everything is is very classy, very under the radar, very uh, unassuming, uh, no, nothing in terms of wanting to be flashy or anything, just very, very classy. That's the whole, um, you know, the whole uh, theme and that theme then translates itself as well then to the sound, okay? So, before uh, I continue talking a little bit more in detail about the sound of the, of, of the Buddha Stur, let me say this. Um, I've, I've always been a person that has kind of, uh, you know, believed in the law of diminishing returns. And more than ever, that law of diminishing returns has become very uh, evident in the last couple, well, the last year or year and a half. The quality of the IEMs that you have uh, lately is so high, especially, especially in the under $1,000 bracket, that... Uh, well, it's been good for the consumer because we are getting IEMs which are the quality and superior quality of way more expensive items just a few years ago and even currently at a fraction of the price, okay? So it's good for them. But it's also made the high-end brands wake up a little bit and uh, start realizing that if they want to maintain themselves in that in that level of high-end and being different, they have to do a lot more than just making it uh, in a fancy shell or with a fancy material and call it fancy names. They have to play well. Um, and that's, that's the truth. That's the reality. I mean, when the Neon Pro came out, uh, it uh, kind of, for those of you that... That believed in it initially, uh, it kind of shook things a bit. Why? Because it was bringing the performance of, uh, of for example, an Anoli VX, uh, to which uh, uh, it was to a certain extent uh, that was that, that was its inspiration to a to a great extent. It brought that performance at a fraction of the price. An Anoli VX was two thousand two hundred, two thousand three hundred dollars. This initially wasn't even six hundred dollars. It was around six hundred dollars. It's now gone up slightly, but it was around six hundred dollars. Uh, and it gave 
a well gave us a well constructed, well built, well put together IEM with Sonian, uh, with predominantly Sonian BAs inside, with a fantastic QDC style tuning, and it just played amazingly well. It, it, it played amazingly well. Period. End of story. It became my reference for a reason, and that, uh, you know, I'm sure to a certain extent made other brands pay attention and say to themselves, well, we have to up the game. We have to start bringing out better things. Because up until then, under the $1,000 bracket, um, you know, okay, fair enough, you had the RSV like I have here. You had the S8. Uh, and then you had a few other things that were a little bit more uh, dubious in their, uh, in their, um, in their um, sound mannerisms, let's put it that way. I'm talking about under $1,000, okay? Uh, above 1,000, yes, you had quite a few IEMs, but you know it was always that question: Will you get that much more from this IEM than that IEM? And I mean, and that was pretty evident. Okay, an Anoli VX, $2,200 versus $600. Does it have enough to justify the price difference? No, it doesn't. It doesn't. Period. End of story. I mean. I don't care if you're a QDC Anoli VX diehard fan. There is nothing that the QDC Anoli VX has extra in its performance that justifies it costing three times as much as a Neon Pro. Period. Okay. Um, since then, we've had a whole bunch of other IEMs in that four, five, six hundred dollar price bracket come up, which are absolutely amazing. The Duno SA6 MK2. I mean, $549 well accessorized fantastic sound i can understand that certain people didn't like the way the bass is done why because the bass is a little bit uh, a little bit over emphasized i would okay i can accept that i can i can deal with it i personally don't think so i think the sa6 mark ii is an amazing im and for me even i prefer the way it sounds in the mids and in the highs to the Neon Pro, and I'm saying this with, with full knowledge that you guys know that I like the Neon Pro. I pushed the Neon Pro. I was a believer and am a believer of the Neon Pro's performance. But this, for me, has a nicer tonality and a nicer timbre than that. Why? Because the way the bass has been done here. This has got a very high impact bass. This has got a slightly warmer bass, and it makes it just that ever so nice in terms of its tonality and timbre. But I can understand people didn't go for that. You had also the 7th Acoustics Supernova, which unfortunately I would have liked to have here for this comparison, but I don't have. That's another IEM, which is priced at around $600, which is absolutely amazing. And it's, in essence, it, the, 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 the Supernova is nothing more, nothing less than a, a SA6 MK2 with a slightly more tamer bass in the way that it comes out. Graphically, it seems similar, but when you listen, it's completely different. Okay? It, it's as simple as that. Again, it's as simple as that. Uh, I've done that experiment with the SA6, I've lowered the bass down a little bit, and it automatically uh, opens up a whole bunch of things that uh, perhaps will be more to the pleasing of, of or, or, or not to the satisfaction of many other people. Anyway, then we had the thing, we had something like the EPZ530, which was an IEM that I, I, I kind of also discovered. Nobody it was giving it much attention and now it's it's getting its attention and and people are seeing that wow this was kind of a hidden gem and it is what what, what is the epz 530 well the epz 530 has got kind of the magic of an sa6 and an rsv put together that's the best way i can describe it's got loads of details up top uh you know mids and highs are very detailed way more detailed ultimately than they are in the rsv and the rsv was pretty good so this makes it technically more competent than the RSV. And then it's got a, a just fuller base than the RSV. So okay, it's got a base which is more similar to that. So you could say that this is, like I said, it's a SA6 Mark II and an RSV kind of put together. Okay. Enter now the, the Butas Tour. Uh, and, you know, graphically, you look at the Butas Tour and I've graphed it against some of these, well, not some, against all of these IEMs. And I graphed it against the only 10 BAI IEM that's here, which is... Uh, the, the, uh, the the Neon Pro. Unfortunately, I also don't have the Anoli VX. I will try and do my best to get the Anoli VX and the Supernova back. If I do, I will do this comparison. Um, and graphically, this graphs very similar to the Neon Pro. Very, very similar. With the Neon Pro with the base switch on, which is how it is there. However, when you listen to it, it just comes across different. D different how, you ask? Well, Yes, that ultimately has got just that little bit extra more bass energy, not bass quality. 
This has got less base energy, but the quality of the of the of the of the base that they've given it here makes it have that tonality that I personally prefer and that I personally feel is what made me gravitate towards the SA6 over the Neon Pro. Okay, that's that's one difference. The other difference is in terms of its um, mids, upper mids, and highs. Again, although they graph very similarly, the level of detail that you get on this, the level of clarity, the level of polish that the Butas Tour adds is, honestly, I was, I, was, I was very, very impressed. I was very surprised. I wasn't expecting it. Why? Because I've always said precisely that about the Neon Pro. The Neon Pro is a very detailed IM. It's, it's got that QDC level and OLEVX level of detail. At a, you know, at a much lower price, obviously, but it's got that QDC level of detail, and you know, soundstage is tremendous. It, it, it is re really, really good technically. So, to find something that technically was being capable or is being capable of doing what the Neon Pro does and even surpass it, I thought it was going to be, you know, almost uh, impossible. Nevertheless, it's here. Um, soundstage. It's slightly bigger than the, the, the Neon Pro. Imaging, better than the Neon Pro. Better image than the Neon Pro. Um, and why? Because it's more clean. It's, it's um, you know, if that is clean, this is that little extra little bit more clean than that will allow you to pinpoint things perfectly. You listen to, uh, for example, uh, to Kill a Moon by Jesse J. And that's one of the songs where you can actually pick that up. Or even better, Comfort Zone, the live version from Larry Carlton. It's an amazing song. Any one of these IEMs does that song justice. Some do it better than others, fair enough. Uh, the ones that, the, 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 the two here besides the, the Butasto that probably do it better, okay, is the EPZ and the Neon Pro. Those are the two that probably do that song the best. Not big differences to the, other, to the others, but it be, they do it the best. <coughs> Excuse me. The Butas Tour just, you listen to the Butas Tour doing that song and you say, oh, okay, this is detail, this is guitar, wow, it's that kind of difference, okay, it's, it's that sort of difference. Is it a huge day and night difference? No, it's not a huge day and night difference, but it's a big, it's, it's sufficient enough if you have, you know, decent enough quality uh, equipment. To, sh to show it. It's not connected to your phone that you will see that. But if you have it, I, I had it many times just connected to the KU and RE7. That is it. And you notice that. Okay. Now, before I carry on with that, just one quick thing that I want to say here, which is um, the Butas tool is very, in my opinion, in my opinion, it's going to be very dependent on the tips you use. Okay. And on how deep you can insert it. The reason why I'm using these KB Euro 7s, the medium size, is because it allows me to insert it deep. And the deeper I am able to insert it, the, the nicer the overall coherence of the sound is. Okay? If I use the, 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 the tips that it brings, yes, it sounds really good, but the bass sounds a little bit lighter. The bass uh, way, uh, you know, uh, uh, is missing just that little extra little bit of weight. Let's put it that way. With these tips, and I'm actually waiting on the on the on the um, latex 570s to arrive to also try those out. With these tips, and with an, uh, and the fact that I'm able to insert the IEM deeper, wow, like wow, it is clean, clean, clean. Look, guys, you know I don't want to exaggerate because you, you, I get some I get so many sorts of of, of of the comments with regards to, um, if you follow me for a while, uh, you know that I, cons I one of the IMs that has impressed me the most over the last year, let's say, um, uh, has been the the, the Des Ti, uh, Vietnamese brand um, uh, that makes that IM. Uh, why? Because <laughs> fair enough, there are uh, other IMs that will perhaps be you know better here and there in, the, in certain you know aspects, but overall the you know the the quality of of the bass the the mids the highs everything in that uh, IEM and it's only a, a you know a, a 4BA plus two ESTs it is something that just I, I wasn't I was never expecting and now and I didn't even think it was possible okay and this the Butas Tour has been an IEM that has 
they had that effect on me. I I approached it with honestly with with uh, a very open mind. I was I you know I said to myself, okay, let's see what this is all about. I saw the graphs. The graphs looked amazing. I saw the price, five hundred ninety nine dollars. I said, okay, it's, it's you know it's fair. And the, mo the and the moment I started listening to it, I saw okay, this is special. And when I found the right tip, and when I also found the best uh, um, source to match it with, which I would recommend a, a warmer sounding source, in my opinion. I, for example, had it connected up to the VE to the, to the to RA, and the two RA is uh, some you know is, is a is a combo that is more organic. It's it's more it's more that old school sound of sound. Uh, and it does wonders for many, many IMs that I have. But with regards to the Butas tour, it wasn't a good combination. Uh, for some reason, it just, they didn't gel. Okay. Uh, however, with the KM, the RU7, the M15 from Q-Star, the, um, the uh, even even the Panon tail, fine, funny enough, even the Panon tail, um, the... Um, NX7 used with those decks, or in the topping, like I did in this particular case. This thing just sounds phenomenal, phenomenal. Honestly, it just sounds phenomenal. Um, okay, let's let's get back into this so that I don't lose, my, lose myself because I, I want to try and see if I can give some some sequence to what I'm telling you guys. Anyway, um, I'm going to talk about technicalities first, and then. We, we, we talk about the, 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 the bass, the, the mids and the highs and so on and so forth. Technically, soundstage, it's the best soundstage of all, the, all, the, of all of these IMs. End of story. It's the biggest, it's the widest, it's the deepest, everything, it's the best. Okay? Uh, which are the two that in my opinion afterwards come closest? Um, Neon Pro and I would say the SA6 and the EPZ. Uh, a very very close to the Neon Pro as well. So these three are the next best with regards to that. Okay, imaging again, the uh, Battle Store, the best. Uh, no 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 questions, no doubts about it. It's it's the best. Okay, in terms of detailed retrieval, again, Battle Store. Um, I would then say. I would then say Neon Pro, EPZ, and RSV, the next bunch, and the SA6, and, uh, uh, sorry, sorry, um, Neon Pro, EPZ, and uh, the SA6, the, the next in line, and then the RSV and the Alita for detailed retrieval, okay? These two ultimately end up being the ones that are darkest sounding, okay? Uh, that's not a bad thing. It's just the way they were they were tuned. That that's why they sound slightly darker. That's it. Um, okay. So uh, detailed retrieval, uh, soundstage, imaging out of the way. Bass, as I was saying, the bass here was um, uh, purposely tuned to be uh, just the right weight, have all the characteristics of a good snappy uh, BA bass, quick detailed you know doesn't linger doesn't okay. but at the same time uh, a, 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 a attention was paid to it to not be uh, overly timberish like you know the, the, to not have that ba timbre so uh, while for example on the uh, neon pro uh, you have a very good bass but then it can sometimes just a little bit come across a little bit of ba timbre mainly because of how then the mids and the treble match that bass okay on the rsv you get no sensation of ba timbre at all in my opinion nothing over here um no sensation of ba timbre as well not really uh, on the sa6 um if you actually have the bass switch off you do feel it sometimes a little bit here and there a little bit and on the alita uh, a little you, you feel it only because it is a little bit too lean in my opinion all right and that leanness kind of uh, uh, lose you know doesn't let it have the necessary weight so you end up feeling that okay maybe this is not a, a dd that's here that this is maybe then just ba's and what i'm what i'm trying to basically say is 
Okay, if it's a BA, it's supposed to sound like a BA, but there's well-executed BAs and there's not so well-executed BAs. And this is a good execution of BA bass, in my opinion. It's clean, it's detailed, it's got enough weight to give it that, that fullness that it should have, but at the same time also, uh, you know, not lose the, the, the BA characteristics, characteristics of speed and so on. Mids, exceptional. I have absolutely nothing to say about the mids. The mids are fantastic. Actually, that's one of the things that all of these IEMs here have perfect is the mids. The RSV has amazing mids. There's nothing that I can say negative about it. The EPZ, the same thing. You know, the, the SA6, again, the same thing. Um, if anything, the SA6 has the, the perhaps the thicker sounding mids because of the bass. The Neon Pro, again, excellent mids nothing wrong about the mids there um the alita it, it, it just the mids are very good they just sometimes lack that little bit of extra weight from the base to complement them and make them you know 100 percent what they could be all right and then highs this is the most these two are the most relaxed highs here unquestionably okay uh with that relaxation comes or get, comes what i was just saying earlier no ba timbre none of that that that's perfect but then you lose that little extra twinkly and sparkly um the ones that for me have the best treble okay out of them these four is these three okay and i'll explain why uh, just because of the, the the timbre and the tonality overall comes out it's not that the treble and the neon pro is not good no it is good it is a very good treble but the timbre and the tonality, okay, just makes it have a little bit extra, too much energy sometimes around that 5 to 8k area. And it can be just a little bit too much. Uh, it, you know, it doesn't really bug me, to be honest, but it can be a little bit too much. On the SA6, that's not even a, uh, that's not a problem. That's, again, one of the things. It's the timbre and the tonality overall and how the, the mid, upper mids and highs come across that seduced me over the, the Neon Pro, that made me like this more over the Neon Pro. The EPZ is very much the same situation, just a little bit more clearer than, than the SA6, uh, a little bit more energetic than the SA6, but very similar. The, the Batustur takes that cleanliness to another level in terms of how it's executed, but without having any of that uh, BA timbre, that none of that uh, harshness, none of that. It, it is, honestly, there were occasions uh, that I was listening to it, uh, and I thought, well, this sounds like it's got an EST here, because the treble quality is so, so good. It is so well done. that it's, it's just, it is truly, truly a very, very well um, uh, put together IEM, honestly. Uh, sonically, build-wise, everything. They, they, they. Wh whoever designed this, okay. Whoever was the engineer that that built this IM, and, and 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 he knows what he's doing. He knows a thing or two about tuning. He's no uh, no no rookie. He he's, he knows he knows music. He knows tuning, and uh, he was able to 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 to, well, to show us his knowledge and to put forward what uh, um, basically I, I believe American spirit American spirit also wanted in terms of, of sound. Um, so there you have it, guys. I mean, uh, you know, uh, I'm going to repeat what I said in the beginning. I, I I didn't want to rush the review because I didn't want to come across like uh, I wasn't giving it the necessary time to listen to it and 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 come to proper conclusion about how good the Batu Star Batu Stur is. But, sorry, Buta Stur is, but it, it it wasn't hard because it is a very very good sounding IEM. End of story. You know, uh, if I if I have to compare it to the RSV, there's no comparison. The, the, you know, there's, there's absolutely no comparison. It does everything the the RSV can do, plus, you know, more detail. Technically, way superior. The only only area where maybe the RSV can can perhaps be a little bit better is it has a little bit extra weight in the bass. But again, it has a little extra weight in the bass because the mids and the highs are not uh, as 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 pronounced as they are here. And that bass then shines a little bit more because the bass here is good. The bass here is really good, really good. Okay, compared to the EPZ, it is uh, overall a better IM. Yes, it is. The difference isn't as big as, for example, with the RSV. The difference is less. Why? Because this also has very clean mids, very clean highs, which uh, technically make it superior to the to the RSV. And you know, 
technically they kind of trade blows here they trade blows this is heavier in the base ultimately and be, being heavier in the base it can then not be maybe the the ideal choice for those that are base sensitive and that want the ultimate in terms of correctness of sound but you know a, a, a exceptional IEM the EPZ 530 is an exceptional IEM exceptional IEM and but still edges it out slightly it does if if what you want is ultimate detail it edges it out uh, fun wise if if, for, if if what I want is something which is perhaps a little bit more musical maybe I would say the EPZ actually comes out on top why because that extra bass will help it out with genres like uh, EDM and 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 hip-hop which the battle studio is not it's that's not its element that's not what it was designed for okay with regards to the SA6 uh, what I said about the EPZ basically applies. It's, it's very much a similar thing. Okay, very much a similar thing. Uh, the bass here, being the way that it's tuned, uh, is the only thing that maybe can uh, be a, a de detrimental to the overall performance. If what you want is, you know, detail and 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 and, and uh, some monitoring capability. Well, not some, but some serious monitoring capabilities. Okay. With regards to the Neon Pro. Um, the Neon Pro is more energetic than this. Yes, it is ultimately more energetic. It's it's ultimately better uh, a better option if what you like listening to is rock. I'm going to say that yes, that's a better option. If ultimately what you like listening to is EDM, I, I guess that's ultimately the better choice. But now, if what you like is jazz and some pop and some good vocals, uh, but I stood all the way, uh, you know, and having said that, you know, uh, uh, the, the difference, for example, in the bass, where the bass, that, that's where, the, you know, the Neon Pro has its, its, uh, its strengths, uh, or one of its strengths, rather, the, the bass quality, the qu bass quality, and, and the same thing applies here to the, to the, to the SA6 and to the 530, it's not the bass quality that uh, it in you know makes the the Buddha still be slightly behind it's just the quantity okay and oh yes I was forgetting there is these switches that they have here which allow uh, for a, a slight emphasis on in one position of the bass which is about a DB difference and then a, a an emphasis well to be done on the upper mids and highs which honestly it doesn't need it uh, it doesn't need it um, you really gain nothing from that extra emphasis on the upper mids and highs um, at least for me, uh, I, I thought that it actually uh, made that balance of the sound become uh, less correct. Okay, as it is with the switches in the in the zero zero position, or, or at most one zero, which is giving that little extra one dB, which is again unnoticeable. I think that the balance that's obtained there is uh, perfect. There's there's no 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 need for for giving more more upper mids and treble. Okay, so. The, the quality of the bass is not the issue. The quality of the bass is exceptional. It's just the quantity, okay? But again, that's the way this was tuned. You know, every one of these IMs has been tuned in a specific manner. So sometimes to make comparisons becomes extremely difficult in, because ultimately it will depend what you want. And I have to keep in mind always what was the design premise. And with regards to the Alita, the, the Alita was, was designed to be smooth. And it is. It is very, very smooth. So, you know, for me to, to also sit here and now say that this absolutely walks over the Alita isn't fair to a certain extent because that was not how this was designed. Now, would I have liked a little bit more treble, uh, upper mids and treble in the Alita? Yes, I would have liked. I think the Alita, if it had a little bit more upper mids and treble, it wouldn't have lost none of its capabilities of being a smooth sounding IEM and it would have gained tremendously technically. You know, that's the, that's the truth. But it is a fantastic IEM. It sounds well. But ultimately, ultimately, it's even more genre specific, more, more narrow in what it can do as compared to the Buta Stu. The Buta Stu will be better than that in that aspect. So, you know, this isn't so much that the Buta Stu is now the one to go for, the best I am. No, no, no. What I am saying is that if I used to, or if I initially only had one reference or one I am that I would say I would recommend, which was the Neon Pro, um, then that was joined by uh, the 530. Sorry, the, the, the SA6 MK2. It was then joined by the, the 530. It was also joined by another IEM, which is the L8S from Leisurely Audio, because that's if what you want is fun and a good IEM for rock and so on and so forth, that is a fantastic IEM. And now this has joined the equation. And it's joined the equation and it's up there uh, on, 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 on that list of recommendations. If what you are wanting is a ultimate IEM with regards to detailed retrieval, um, 
technical capabilities. You know, Buta Studio is, is, is the one. It's not, it is, it has enough going for it to ultimately edge out all of these IEMs here. And I only wish, like I said, I had the Anoli VX here and I had the, the Supernova to compare it to those. But for the price, nothing that I have in front of me here is capable of beating it. And, and more expensive IEMs, they, I am the opinion that they should watch out. They must, they must be, they must have their A game on, because um, no, they, they, they won't be able to, 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 to do, to do the Buddha tour easily, to do it over easily. Um, as always, if you want me to compare it to uh, any other IEMs, or please let me know. Um, I could have had as well the SR8 here from Soundrhyme. I could have had the the, the Panon, the Turbo as well. But I just felt that. Uh, oh, the SR8 would have perhaps made sense to have here yeah, because it can also be made or to, uh, adjusted to sound more more neutralish, like all of these IEMs here sound. Um, but uh, the turbo was just it, it's just so different in its tuning that I just felt it, it wouldn't be a fair comparison to a certain extent. Very much like the Alita, but I have the Alita here because it's also on the neutral end. You know, all of these IEMs are neutral with uh, different grades of, of of warmness in the base, so that's why I, 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 I selected these and I didn't add those two. All right. Anyway, guys, I'll just quickly show you the graphs and uh, we'll wrap it up. All right. You take care now. Bye bye. Hi guys and welcome now to the graph section for the uh, Night Oblivion. This is the graph of the Night Oblivion with both switches off and in the uh, and using the stock tip. Okay, so as you can see, everything is relatively flat. Everything sits within a window of 64 to 72, 71, so roughly 7 dB. So this is a I would consider this a, a neutralish warm kind of tuning. Very relaxed, very chilled. If uh, we now put on the uh, base switch, it's this one here. Uh, look, the difference is so minimal that honestly, uh, being there and not being, it's you know, it's the same thing. So that's it. Um, if we, however, add the uh, change the switches around to the zero one, which is the one that boost the um, the uh, upper mids and treble, uh, you can see, sorry, let me just align this, this extra little bit better, there we go, okay, you can see this just a little bit of extra energy there from 5 to 8, personally, I don't feel it's necessary, I, I prefer it the way it is in stock format, okay, and then finally, if I add uh, just a little bit, no, sorry, yeah, that's it, so I've shown it to you in stock with the base boost, which is almost negligible, and then with the treble boost, which is again, in my opinion, unnecessary. I, however, used it with the, I um, uh, preferred it with the 07 tips, and with the 07 tips, it is this one here. So, for some reason, which I don't understand, it gave me that little boost of the bass that you have with the switch on. Uh, I'm assuming it's a tip related thing. But look, 1dB, it's not because of that. What it did change is how the whole profile up top is done. And I just prefer the way it sounded this way, to be honest. That's just me personally. I just preferred the way that this, this was done, all right? So uh, I will do most of the comparison. Well, I'll do all the comparisons now, the graphs with the stock one. And then I can do it as well with, uh, with, uh, with the 07 if you guys want. But I'll do the comparisons with the stock tip, all right? Stock tip, zero, zero setting. This is how it is, all right? Now. Let's start bringing your things. The first one I'm going to bring to the equation here to the table is the um, seventh acoustics supernova. All right, there we go. Um, I think it's self-explanatory. I really don't think I need to explain a lot or say a lot. It's they are almost identical. They both have this QDC style of tuning, uh, which I'll show the QDC in a, in a second as well, and you'll understand what I'm saying. Um, it's there, okay? All right, next one. Um, the our Audio Alita. Our Audio Alita. Let me just change the color, sorry, so that it's more visible and obviously align it. Align it, align it, align it. I'm gonna. 1K. 
there we go. Now, where do we see the differences, the main differences? It's not so much in the base. Where you do see the differences in the upper, mid and treble. Uh, there's, by comparison, the Alita is dark. It's as simple as that. You know, it's, it's, and, and it could have had a little bit more and it still wouldn't have lost none of the magic that it is known for, which is to be smooth, very chilled out listening. And it would, I, I, I am the opinion that it would have benefited the Alita. The Alita would have been uh, more successful with just a little bit more detail. Okay, so that's the Alita. Out of the way, get it out. Okay, next one. Our Audio Neon Pro base switch off first. Let me just align it. And... There we go. It doesn't get more similar than this. Now, what does differ from one and the other is the way that the upper mids and treble are handled on the Neon Pro as compared to the um, Buta Studio in terms of how they sound, not graphically, because graphically you could not get that perception, is they are more energetic, they are uh, more in your, in your face on the Neon Pro, okay? Well, which would be good for like I said earlier, rock or more uh, energy intensive music, I think will benefit from that. However, having said that, the Buddha Tour has no lack of energy and it's also capable of doing the, that style of music or that, that genre of music, all right? But it's just more polished in the way that it does it. It's not so, it's not so, this is not the right word, not so rough by comparison, okay? With the bass switch on, we basically have the same situation. Okay, in the upper mids and treble and so on. Just that now we have a, a, a little bit of a extra added boost in terms of the bass, and it's in the mid bass that you see the big differences uh, with with some more energetic genres like uh, hip hop and 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 um, and, uh, and EDM being able to be portrayed more towards my liking and more towards the way they should be done. Again, I say the Buddha Studio is able of doing it, but that's not it's that's not where it's uh, at home, I mean, I listened to some reggae with the Buddha Studio and it was fine, it was perfect. But I have to say that with the Neon Pro, it was just that little bit extra bit more engaging, that little extra bit more more satisfying. All right, so that's the Neon Pro. Okay, now next one, EPZ five thirty. Okay, let's just align this a little bit better. There we go, EPZ five thirty. Um, the biggest difference that you notice is in the mid bass. So there's, there's, there's that little extra mid bass like the Neon Pro has with the bass switch on, okay? Uh, and then you do notice that there's um, a, a feeling of slightly more energy up top, not as big as what you see here, the difference. Uh, you know, you, you by looking at the graph, you would think that the EPZ is going to be way more energetic in the upper mids and treble, and no, it's very much similar. Uh, if there is uh, something that I have to nitpick is that it's less polished again than the uh, than the Buddha Studio. The Buddha Studio is just that smidge more polished, okay? Uh, not huge difference, but it's just a smidge more. It doesn't have as well the sort of bass that we have on the EPZ. So if I take that into consideration, then the EPZ is perfect. You know, it's, it's, it's just a different flavor. Will be better suited for some other genres of music, which the, the Butastu will struggle with, okay? So that's the EPZ done. Next now is the Duno SA6 with the switch off first, okay? And we can already see some similarities. Ba -ba 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 -ba, with the bass switch off, and you can see that with the bass switch off, it's basically the same sort of bass as we have on the, the Buddha Studio. The difference is because it's less energetic in the mids, upper mids and treble, uh, it sounds thicker, it sounds more 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 weighty, okay? You feel more the bass, all right? If I put the bass switch on, that gets further compounded. That's the only thing that really changes uh, because there's now more bass, but the mids and upper mids and the treble maintain itself. So the, the SA6 will sound uh, or can sound to some people overly thick. It's not that the difference is, as you can see here, huge, no, it's also a very minute difference, but there is a difference and it exists, so, uh, you know, the SA6, it's, 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 uh, it, on, if, if I, well, I did lower the, the, the bass with, uh, with an equalizer to see, in terms of mids and upper mids and highs, it's as, every bit as good as the Butastur, it's the energy that it brings and it carries from behind. 
that doesn't let this area here become as clear and as detailed as it is on the Buddha's tour. So, you know, it's like I said many times, it's this finding this balance, it's so complicated. And it's, it's not easy because, you know, they'll think one thing, believing that we will like one thing, we, they do it that way, and then, ah, oh, no, we don't like it because it's too much bias. Oh, we don't like it because it's too much. You know what? Being a tuner is <laughs> a very ungrateful job. Anyway, that's the SA6. Uh, and that's it, finally. Uh, let me just, I'll just put all the graphs uh, which are relevant. I'm going to put the night oblivion with the tip that I used so you guys can see how it stacks up. So with the tip that I used, it was number 20, sorry, number, number 21. Okay, that's it with the tip that I used. No, no sorry, not this one. My apologies. I'm getting tired now. Number 19, sorry. With the 07 tips, that's how the Bhutas tour comes out. Okay. Um, oh, RSV, I was forgetting the RSV. I'm sorry, guys. I'm sorry, 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 sorry. This is the RSV. Let me just change the color here on the RSV. Make it black. Okay. And line it up. Now, the RSV, you would, and you guys, it's actually curious when you see it now lined up. Ba -ba -ba -ba. Okay, there we go. The RSV, uh, you would think that it has the same sort of upper mids and treble as the, the Buddha Sturden. No, it doesn't. Uh, why? Because the bass as well doesn't sound as lean as it sounds here compared to the bass of the Buddha Sturden. Uh, I would say that the bass of the, of, the, of, the, of the RSV is a little bit more pronounced than what you actually hear in terms of, of or see here in terms of the graph, mind you. And then the mids and the treble and, up and, and you know, mids, up mids and treble are not as energetic as what the graph shows, but this is what it is. Uh, let me just add here again the SA6 with the bass switch off. So it's this one here. Let me make it a different color so it can stand out a little bit more. There we go. So that's the SA6. Uh, again, it's the energy, the overall energy of the mids, upper mids and treble that is the biggest difference to the Butas Tour. Uh, Neon Pro with the bass switch off. Uh, there we go. And let me make it a different color as well. Let me make it, uh, let me make it blue. There we go, blue. Um, very similar to the mids, upper mids and treble of the 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 Buddha Stur. The difference is it's not as polished. It's a little bit rougher, okay. And then finally the EPZ. Where are we? EPZ, EPZ five thirty exactly. Uh, number sixteen. EPZ five thirty. There we go. The EPZ 530 uh, jumps out as being the one with the most mid bass. But again, when you listen to it, actually, it doesn't sound as mid bass heavy as what the graph would maybe uh, lead you to to believe. And it also seems like it's the one that has the most uh, uh, you know extension past 10k, which is again not the case. It's the it's the one IEM here that you would maybe you know think of it. Oh, this is a V shaped. No, 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 no. It's not V shaped. Uh, at least that's not how I perceive it. Um, and uh, yeah, that's it, guys. I mean, I think I've, I've, I've basically shown everything. Um, oh, QDC and only VX. I'm, oh, oh my God, I'm forgetting, I'm forgetting, I'm forgetting, I'm forgetting. Sorry, guys, sorry, guys. Open QDC, QDC. Let's get your QDC and show you guys QDC, the Anoli VX quickly. Anoli VX, there we go. And align them. And that's it. Uh, that's the Anoli VX. The Anoli VX, like I said, I didn't listen to it, so I'm not going to say much. I'm just showing you the graph. Seems more energetic from memory. Uh, I cannot say yes or no. I'll, I would have to listen to it. All right. Anyway, guys, like and subscribe. Any questions, please feel free to ask. And uh, I'll do my best to answer as quickly as possible. You take care now. Bye-bye.